Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you were. My, this is Ahmed Ziftawi. Uh, for people who didn't attend the last few sessions, uh, my name is Ahmed. I am a mechanical engineer, graduated back in 1983. Since that time, I'm in oil field industry and uh, working with some international companies. Um, I work it in services like cold tubing, uh, wireline, uh, well testing, uh, um, but specialized later on in cold tubing and simulation. And I'm teaching the well intervention course since uh, 1995 in almost 18, 19 countries around the world. And uh, this course is a well intervention, but uh, I would say that it is it is basic, basic well intervention. It is not a condensed one uh, like what should be, because I know that you are young engineers, and uh, but uh, the real one we we do it for uh, people who has been in the field for years before they attend this course. And uh, the last few session we talk about in completion operation. We, we discussed the, uh, how to control the well, very important. We went quickly through the pressure control equipment and uh, uh, some phenomena like the hydrates and how to kill the well. And last session, we start talk about completion. And this is the second session and last one about completion. Okay. Uh, we discussed last session why completion, why we why we run completion, so the advantage of that, and what are the accessories we run, uh, and how we select the tubing, yani, based on what we when we go to the supermarket to buy production uh, tubing, based on what we select the uh, diameter, uh, the tensile strength, the barrier limit, the collapse resistance, and uh, the uh, tensile strength of the tubing, um, whether it it will resist H2S or CO2 or no, it is for uh, sweet service. Um, how to run later on the stimulation tools? Can can it run through this production tubing or not? Uh, what the velocity created and and it, there are a lot of factors we discuss that uh, guide us on the right. Uh, completion tubing we should uh, purchase. And we stopped last session on this very important question, why do tubing strings move up and down? And b before I go any farther, uh, I need to repeat that uh, um, for you guys, uh, any question you have, please write it. Uh, I might not be able to look at it during the session because I concentrate on what I'm saying, but uh, at the end of the session, I, I will go through all your questions and I'll answer them one by one. Be sure of that. Oh, back to this important question. Why do tubing strings move up and down during the cycle, during the life of the of the well? This completion tubing, it moves up and down. Why? Can any of you ask? Uh, answer this question. I will try to look at the answer if you have any answers. I'm waiting your answer. Why tubings move up and down during the life of the well? No answer so far. Even if you don't, would you please tell me? I don't know. At least I, I can see that you are participating. You are there. I'm not talking to the sky, Yani. Yeah, finally I receive an answer. Which is true due to temperature. Temperature effect, yeah. The production tubing is metal, right? So it affects by temperature. So uh, we have to consider this 
And uh, we have to put an accessory that can absorb this fluctuation of length due to the change of temperature. If you don't decide, if you don't have these accessories, who will withstand this fluctuation in length? It is the completion tubing itself. This completion tubing, this is the one that will withstand. So if you don't have a device within the completion production tubing, what you will have to do is you, when you buy this completion tubing, you have to buy it with high tensile strengths because the tubing itself that will stand this tension or compression due to the change of temperature. We need to talk about these devices that we put within the completion tubing. These devices is actually, it is to absorb the fluctuation of length due to the change of temperature. What we have is uh, what we call polish bore receptacle, BBR. We have tubing seal assembly. We have extra long tubing seal receptacle. We call it ELTSR. We'll talk about that. And we have expansion joint. Um, after a while, we will talk about each one of them to explain how, how it works. But let us talk now about a device we call it flow coupling. We discussed last session that we have two flow couplings we use. It is uh, what we call it uh, uh, pieces that withstand the erosion. We have a flow coupling and we have a blast joint. We talk about the blast joint. This is the blast joint, you see, which is actually a piece of pipe. We put it where? We put it in front of the formation. Why? Because while production, especially with uh, sand formation, sandstone formation, what comes with the hydrocarbons is sand. So this sand with this velocity, it hits, it hits your pipe. When it hits your pipe, after a few months, your pipe will be a lot of holes. So to prevent that, in front of the formation, we put what we call blast joint. Blast joint is a piece of pipe that has the same ID of the tubing, but it has a wall thickness. It is thicker. So it will withstand more. It will resist more instead of having holes in after one year or two, it will have holes after maybe six, seven years. So this is the blast joint. We put it in front of the perforation to withstand an external erosion. While the flow coupling, which you see it here, we put it below or below and after. Any device we add to the completion, any accessories we use like landing nipple, like SSD, like SPM, because actually uh, any accessories you put in the completion, it will have a smaller ID, so it will create resistance to the flow while coming out. If the well pressure is not high enough, this might kill the well. This back pressure created might kill the well. So what we do, if you look here, this is the device, whatever device we add to the completion. Below that, we put this yellow part, which is the flow coupling. It has the same ID as the tubing. The production tubing is this brown color, uh, so or pink color. So it has the same ID, as you notice, but thicker. Wall thickness, it has wall thickness. Because actually, a flow while coming out of the formation all the way up, it goes, we call it laminar flow. The laminar flow is very friendly. It's like you are driving your car in, uh, in a highway. 
the highway is, is four lanes. So you have four cars in four lanes. No disturbance. But a little bit ahead, there is an accident between two cars which occupied the first and second lane. So now four cars would reach this point where four cars need to go in two lanes only. Who goes first? Then driver start to fight. Who goes first? This is exactly uh, what is happening here with the flow. The flow comes laminar flow. When they reach this restriction, who goes first? So the flow to start to fight, which creates a turbulent flow. A turbulent flow, it goes in waves like that. This causing internal erosion to the production tubing. That's why we put below, and sometimes in high pressure wells, we put below and above this uh, uh, accessories. We put this uh, flow coupling, which is the sa it has the same idea as the tubing, but heavy wall thickness to withstand internal erosion, while a blast joint is to withstand the external erosion. Uh, one of the accessories we run in the production tubing is landing nipples. One of these landing nipples is the landing nipples specially designed to uh, to accept a downhole city valves. Uh, a downhole city valve is one of the emergency barrier we discussed first. The, that's why we need to talk a little bit about it. Why we use subsurface city valve? It is our last line of defense. And that's why in my first session when we discussed this, I said two devices, you put them in your left hand pocket and zip it. Don't touch them unless you are forced to. Lower master valve and a downhole city valve. And I even say that if you are in a really serious situation and you have nothing to use but one of these, which one you select to use first is the lower master valve. A downhole city valve is your last, last, last line of defense. And it protects life, definitely. Protect the operator investment, of course. Protect the environment, for sure. And at the end, it is government requirement. You must, you cannot pr produce from a well which does not have downhole city valve. Uh, in the past, we had what we call PASSV, which stands for Pressure Activated Subsurface Control Safety Valve. And we had two types of that. We have what we call ambient pressure, and we had what we call differential pressure. We stopped using this type of valves from last century. I'm talking about 1980. 6, 1987 maximum, we stop using them because these devices uh, create problem for us. We were not the, the, the upper hand. We, it is not our well when to open or when to close. But open and close this type of valves was the downhole condition because we normally run it with the wire line and sit it deep in the well, below the pocket, in landing nipple, below the pocket, and we start flowing the well. The differential type, for example, the differential type where we sit it at a certain differential pressure, and uh, we use the wire line, we run it open, when we, we run it all the way below the pocket, sit it over there, and we start producing. Uh, when the bottom hole pressure or the differential pressure at the bottom changed, this valve closed automatically, protecting your life and protecting your investment. Uh, every time you need to reopen it again, all what you have to do is apply pressure from above to bring the differential pressure to the preset. But what is the problem we had with this device? <laughs> 
a downhole condition of any well around the world is not stable. Yani, do not believe me if I told you that uh, this particular well, its bottom hole pressure is 3,500. It is never. El, el bottom hole pressure conditions, it fluctuates up and down around the clock. So any fluctuation that happens, it changes the differential pressure. This type of valve, they don't understand. So any change that happens in the differential pressure, it closes automatically. So many times it closes when it is not necessary to close. Wasting my money, wasting my time. So these type of valves, we stop using them from last century, actually. These days, we are using what we call SC, SSV, surface control subsurface valve. The valve is still subsurface to protect it from you, but it is surface control this time. And we have two types of lights. We have what we call wireline retrievable, and we have a tubing retrievable that holds this valve. And these are the two types we are using these days, and we need to talk about them a little bit. But before we move to the next slides, we have to agree on what I wrote in green, that all types of downhole city valve, they work by pressure. None of them is working by temperature or by, by force or by, by jarring. It works by pressure. And the two closure mechanisms I have, it is either bowl type that open and close like that, or flapper type which open and close like that. These are the two main types we can have. Uh, if you decide to run wireline retrievable down the valve, this is the wireline retrieval down the valve, which is very simple construction. It is body, which is the blue, and we have the lock mandrels or the dogs that sits in the profile of the landing nipple. To call it lock mandrel, this is red color. We have packing, elastomeric packing, that seep, and the mechanism. Inside the valve consists of piston, spring, flow tube, and flopper. Flopper is one of the closure mechanisms we just discussed. It is either flopper or bowl. Flopper is much better because it gives you the full the full size, actually. If you decided to run this valve, then while running the compilation, you run the landing nipple with the compilation. So this landing nipple it is fitted to the compilation, and you keep running. And while run, if you see that this landing nipple has a special features here, where here we can connect the control line, uh, which is a stainless steel tube, quarter inch, which is all the way to the surface, where in the surface attached with the hand pump. So we can open the valve and close by using these devices. We'll see how now. So once you run the completion, now you are ready to run this valve. So you ask the wireline man to run this valve. So, he run it till it reached the depth and he set it inside the landing nipple and this is how it looks like when it is inside the landing nipple so if you look at this look mandrels it goes through this, through this profile here to lock it in place what makes the seal is the packing this is the packing you see it is two sets of packing why two sets of packing so when you are when you pump the fluid through the control line. The fluid passes here. What makes the fluid goes inside the valve between these two packings? Because he cannot escape anywhere. So these two packings will tell him you have no place to go rather than going inside the valve. When it goes inside the valve, it pushes the system down. It, it pushes the piston, the piston pushes the spring, it pushes the flow tube, which is a piece of pipe. When this system goes down, it it moves the flapper. It pushes the flapper to be open. The flapper is closed by default through a torsion spring it has. So by pushing this system down, you open the flapper. And as long as the system is down, you have the pressure on the control line. The system is down. The flapper is open at any particular time. If you need to uh, shut in the well in emergency, all what you have to do is 
bleed off the pressure from the surface. When you bleed off the pressure from the surface, this spring is not loaded anymore. So it will retract back. When it retracts, it takes the system with it all the way up. The moment the flow tube, which is this piece of pipe, is out of the flopper, the torsional spring closes the flopper, the well is shut in, and the well is secured. This is the principle, how, how it works. But of course, we have so many questions to ask. Let us, let us ask some questions here. After you run the completion, now the valve in my hand, I need to run it in the hole. If the valve at the surface, the system is up and the flopper is closed. I cannot run in the hole with the flopper closed. Why? Why I cannot run in the hole with the valve while the flopper is closed? Any answer? Can you answer me this question? Why I cannot run this valve with flopper closed? Let me see if you have any answers. I start receiving some answers. One of them is due to temperature, due to pressure differential. One of the answer is to prevent the surf. One of the answer is because the compression fluid will not go. Uh, which I will consider this a good answer, although uh, it is not clear, but I imagine that I understand what's the behind your words, yes. Come on, guys. There is a magic formula. I fall in love with it. The formula says, what is pressure? Pressure equal force divided by area. From this equation or formula, what is force? It is pressure times an area. Now, if we assume that this is our completion, and let us run, this is the wire line, valve, let us run it inside with the flopper closed. While running in the hole, the fluid will try to prevent you because the force applied to the flopper, which is the full area, the force applied. So if the area is huge, then the force is huge. So this force applied by the fluid might prevent you from going down. So you have to open the flopper wiring the hole. When you open the flopper, where is the area? It is just the thickness of the flopper. So the force, the force applied only to this thickness. This is the area. So by decreasing the area, you decrease the force applied so you can run easily in the hole. And that's why you have to run it open. How about run it open? The only way you have this type of valve is to use what we call prong. The prong is a steel bar. We attach it to the running tool of the downhose valve, this bar, it keeps pushing the flopper open while you are running in the hole. The moment you set the valve in its nipple and you release, you are pulling out the running tool. The moment the running tool 
is out of the flapper, the flapper closed by the torsion spring. So the only way to run it open is by using what we call prune. One more question here. What kind of fluid we use to pump to apply this pressure to the uh, system to goes down? In the past, I used to say hydraulic oil. But I stopped using this word because it's not correct, actually. What is better than that? It is fluid compatible with location supply. Fluid compatible with location supply, which means that uh, if this valve works by this special fluid that we manufacture in the moon, if, if, I, if I'm in need to a bottle of it, then I have to wait for the space shuttle to travel all the way to the moon and come back to bring me a bottle. Then I have to stop produce production from this well till I fix my wireline valve. But instead, if the fluid I the the, the, the fluid I'm using is is empty, the bottle is empty, uh, I can go to the mechanic shop, grab uh, gear oil. Uh, Automatic transmission oil, the engine oil, it works. Today is Sunday, the mechanic shop is closed. I go to the cook, go to the kitchen, grab uh, olive oil, sunflower oil. It works. It's compatible with, compatible with what I have in location. Uh, when you bleed off the pressure to close this valve, you have to monitor return. Very important to monitor return. Why? Because if in normal condition, when you bleed off the pressure, when you bleed off the pressure, so the system will goes up, goes up, it pushing the fluid back to the tank. The amount of fluid returned to the tank has to be monitored. Because if in normal condition, the amount returned fill this bottle or this glass. Now, today, when you bleed off the pressure, the amount fill half the glass only, this tells me what? It tells me that the system didn't go all the way up. It goes only halfway and stuck, which one of the indication that the valve is not closed yet. That's why you have to monitor a return. Uh, if your decision is not to run wireline retrievable, you're going to run tubing retrievable. The tubing retrievable, you run it with the completion. It is part of the completion. It is fixed to the completion. And this is how it looks like. It is the same principle. It is the same even components, plus or minus. Uh, but this, you run it with the completion. So it is one, one run instead of two runs. Uh, but here I have a problem. In the wireline retrievable, if it failed, I can run with the wire line, take it out, do the maintenance, and put it back. But if this one fails, wire line cannot pull it out of the hole. You need to have a rig. So you have to kill the well, bring a work over rig, pull the completion, change it, and put it back. It's a hassle. Why am I using it? with this big disadvantage. Actually, I use it because it, it has one single advantage over the wireline retrieval. If I have two valves, one is wireline retrieval, one is tubing retrieval. Both has the same size. The tubing retrievable ID is larger. So I am using it for very low pressure reservoirs. I need to tell the pressure, the low pressure down home, do not worry, go up. There is no restrictions. Because any restrictions, as we discussed, it will create back pressure. If the well pressure is not strong enough, the well will die. So in the tubing retrieval, because it is full bore, there is no restrictions. So I'm using it for low pressure formation. And actually, I'm using it for the opposite. I am using it for the high pressure gas wells. Why? 
to answer this question, I have to go back to these slides. This is the wire line. You see, when we set the wire line valve inside its landing nipple, we have these two packing. If you look at the lower packing here, this lower packing, it is all the time exposed to the hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons destroy rubber. Even if it is high, uh, uh, high grade rubber, yani, it, it affects it. That's why this type of valves, you have to do complete redress or, or the life of this valve, we say between 18 to 24 months, where you have to take it out, make complete redress before you turn it back. But this one, since it doesn't have these features, this can last up to 20 years without the need to change it, which is a big advantage of that one. But anyhow, even if this one failed, we, we have many, many ways to go without pulling the completion. One of them is, if it fails, I'll tell him, okay, you failed at what? You failed as a valve. I will use you as a landing nipple because this valve is a valve and landing nipple in one body. So if he failed as a valve, what I will do, I will run the wire line, go to the flow tube of this valve and keep drawing it down. Keep jar it down till it sits in a profile below to be permanently down. If the flow tube is permanently down, then the flipper is permanently open. Then the valve is not a valve anymore. It became an ending nipple. So I can insert the valve inside it, insert the wireline valve. But of course, I would have to go to a smaller size to be uh, run through. Uh, This, this actually flow chart, it, it summarized the story of downhole system valve, where we say that we have surface control and subsurface control. The subsurface control, we had two types. We have a, an ambient and differential. We stopped using this from last century. Nowadays, we are using the surface control, which we have two types. We have a wire line and we have a tube material. The wire line, how we run it open by prong. A tubing retrieval, how we run it open, we have two, two ways to go. Either through the control line, because the control line is fitted to the valve. So by applying pressure to the control line, we keep this flopper open while running in the hole. Or by using what we call a straddle set, which is a piece of pipe. We drop it from the surface while the valve at the surface, we drop it. So it goes by its weight, it opens the flopper and stay in front of it in front of the flopper, preventing the flopper from being closed. Then we run in the hole. When we reach the depths, we can use a wire line to pull this straddle set out. Uh, we agreed that they are all work by pressure. And the, the two closure mechanism I have is either pull or flopper. Uh, how to open the valve? This is, this is a good question. Let us assume that we have a wireline retrieval valve and um, it is open. But then during the life of the well, we have a serious issue that we have to close the downhole stage valve. So we bleed off the pressure, the, the flopper closed, well is secured, we bleed off the pressure above, we fix the problem we have on top. Now everything is okay. We need to open the valve now to start production. How to open the flopper? So people will say, apply pressure to the control line to open it. I said, no, because in one of the sessions, we agreed that you cannot open any device without equalization. You have to equalize the pressure. Even if the device is self-equalizing, where you give it a little bit of pressure and sometimes a little bit of, of, of jarring to open this very little hole to make self-equalization, then you can continue. So to open this valve, like any other thing which is closed, you need to open, you have to equalize the pressure above and below first before you continue. And we use fluid compatible with location supply as we discussed. 
one of the devices we run with the compilation is what we call side pocket mandrel. The side pocket mandrel is a is a piece of pipe, but it has a billy. Where in this billy we put here a gas lift valve. We use these devices in artificial wells, uh, in wells which does not produce uh, natural. Uh, they need a sort of artificial lift, and the sort of artificial lift, the method of artificial lift we decided is gas lift. So we run these devices. But actually, we run these devices sometimes in natural flow wells. Why? Because we have a vision. We have a vision that this well will produce naturally for six, seven months. Then it will die. We need artificial lift. So from day one, I make my calculation and my design and I run these devices. But instead of the valve here, I put a dummy valve, a plug. So I'm not using these devices. The well is flowing naturally. When it dies, then I, I run wire line with uh, shift with the uh, kick over tool where they take this dummy valve out. They put instead what we call gas lift valve. What is the purpose of, purpose of the gas lift valve? Now I run, I inject gas in the annulus. This gas I inject in the annulus. It goes through these ports, passing through this gas lift valve inside the tubing to lift the liquid in the tubing up. This is how it works. So these gas lift valves I'm using, they have a check valve. This check valve, it is to allow direction in one flow, one path on from an annulus to tube, not vice versa. How many side pocket mineral I should have? I don't know. Uh, actually, this is based on the design. You give me the data, I will feed it to the software. The software will come up, tell me that based on the data you give me, Ahmed, in this particular well, you have to put three gas lift valves. One at a depth of 2,506. The other one at 6,093. And the last one at 9,000 feet. And these depths has to be very accurate because these valves, they are differential pressure type. They open and close at a certain pressure. So if you have the gas lift valve, gas lift valve number one, and you put it inside pocket mandrel number two, it will fit, but it will not work. You put it on a different differential pressure, he doesn't know. So he will never work. It will never work. So the depth has to be very accurate. The purpose of it is to lift the hydrocarbons, to, to lift the oil, which is in the tubing all the way up. Uh, if you don't want to this, this type of communication or circulation, we remove the gas lift valve and we put a dummy valve, which is a plug. If you need to pump chemicals, what we do is you run you pump, uh, you remove this gas lift valve and you put chemical injection valve. If you need to just make circulation, remove this and put circulation valve. If you need to kill the well, remove this valve and put what we call differential kill valve. All these valves I mentioned, differential kill valve, circulating valve, uh, chemical injection valve, gas lift valve, they all have a check valve allowing the direction of the flow in one path only, not vice versa. Then people start asking me, so why you change the valves? I said, because I said before, use the equipment for what it is designed for. The gas lift the valve from its name to use it with gas. And keep in mind, any device you use it with gas is very expensive device. So don't use it for rubbish. And who told you that these gas lift valve can withstand chemical, for example? If you if you need to pump chemical, use chemical injection valve which resists the chemicals. So who told you that the gas lift valve can can be used to 
from mud, for example. Use differential kill valve in that. These are the type of valves we can run and uh, sit in the side pocket monitor, which is gas lift valve, dummy valve, chemical injection valve, circulation valve, differential dump kill valve. And one of the questions sometimes that if you use, why you use circulation valves? And what's the purpose yani, of the circulation valves? And one of the questions really was about that question. The question said, uh, you need to do circulation in one of these wells where you remove the gas lift valve. But somehow you don't have circulation valve to put in that profile. So you decided to circulate through the profile. What precaution you should do while circulation through the profile? I will tell you, please, if you are going to do that, please reduce your rate as much as you can. Why? To minimize the friction. Because if you circulate with a high rate, this will create friction to the profile. After you finish the job, you, run, you put back the gas lift valve to not set, to leak, because you damage the profile. That's why if you ask me this question, what is the purpose of circulation valve? My answer is to protect your profile. This is the main reason for using the circulation valve. It is to protect your profile. SSD, sliding side door. So sliding sleeve, which is again a piece of pipe. But this piece of pipe has ports from outside and it has a door, sliding door, this brown color or so, uh, sliding door. When this door is closed, there is no communication between the tubing and the annulus. If you need to establish communication between the tubing and the annulus, you open this device by running a shifting tool with a wire line, latch on the door, and then start jarring the door. Some doors are jarred up to open, some other are jarred down to open. But anyhow, once you open it, so these ports are open. So now you establish communication between a tubing and an annex. This is the main purpose of the sliding side door. It is to allow communication or circulation between a tubing and an annex. Um, what I need you to know about in SSD is five five facts. Number one, why we use it? It is for circulation of communication. Number two, before you open, what should you do? We agreed. You cannot open any device without equalization. So you have to equalize the pressure between a tubing and the annulus before you open it. Number three, when you open it, you have to be sure it is fully open because if it is partially open and you start circulation, this door will be in front of the circulation pressure. So it will vibrate like that. This vibration might affect the seal. If the seal is affected or damaged, you will uh, not be able to close. And even if you close it, it will leak. If it leaks, it's a big issue because you have to kill the well, bring a workover rope, uh, pull the compression to change it. So number one, it is for communication or circulation. Number two, uh, you have to equalize the pressure before you open. Uh, number three, you have to be sure it is fully open. Uh, number four, where we put it. People say we put it above the parker. I said wrong answer because if you look at this sketch you have in front of you, this is the parker here. So if I put it below the tubing hanger at the surface, this is above the parker. So you cannot say above the parker. So people came back and 
change their answers to say just above the pack. I said, wrong answer. Because if you put it just above the pack, after some time, settlement of the prison scales will be on top of the pack, making your SSD stuck. So later on, if you need to open, you will not be able to. That's why we put, we say, we put it one joint above the pack. One joint, which means 30, 35 feet above the packer. So even if there is a settlement of the scales mm -hmm. on top of the packer, still away from the SSD, it doesn't affect it. In this sketch in front of you, we have two packers. This is the packer, and this is the second one. Why we have two packers? Because we have two formations. If we have two formation, two packer, that means you have to have two SSD. One, we put it as agreed, one joint above the packer. Why, where we put the second one? The second one, we put it between the two packers. This is the second one. Here it is. But this one we put between the two packers is not for circulation. It is for production. If you need to produce from the upper zone, open it. If you don't, keep it close. So the one we put between the two packers is not for circulation, but it is for production. The fact number five, I need you to know about it is, if we have more than one SSD, and let us assume that we will use three SSD in this completion, Should we, how should we put them, like, uh, uh, the first one jar up, the last two jar down, one let the first two jar down, the last one jar up, or one jar up, one jar down, one jar up, or all of them jar down. Or... Away from engineering thinking, let us use the common sense. If you are using 3 SSD, please standardize either all of them are up or all of them are down. So you will not be confused. Oh my God, the first one was jar up or jar down. The second one was jar up or jar down. Standardize your equipment. Either all of them are up or all of them are down. And this is actually the, the five facts I need you to know about the SSD. Use for communication, equalize before opening, be sure it is fully open. Set one joint above the packer, this is for communication. Or between the two packers, this is for production. The last thing that all SSD has to be in the same direction. Yeah, around 10 minutes left, so I need to talk about the packers and the tube and why we, we use devices to absorb the fluctuation. The production packer, we have two types of packer. We have uh, permanent packer, this one, and we have retrievable packer, this one. If you notice, both are, have the same components. Any packer consists of three main, three main components. Body, yellow color. Then we have slips that bite and set the packer in place, which is in green color. And the rubber element that inflates and makes the seal, which is black color. If you decided to run permanent packer, then we run it independently. We run it before we run in completion. How we run it, we have two ways to go. We run it either uh, with drill pipe. So we keep connecting drill pipe and run, run, run till we reach the depth. When we reach the depth, we put a plug, we run it through, set it in the landing nipple below the packer, and then we apply pressure from above till we reach the, the pressure that shears the sitting pins of this packer. Once this once it shears, once the pins are sheared, then these slips will bite with the casing. The rubber element will inflate due to the temperature the packer is set. In this way, we set it hydraulically. 
or we can set it electrically by E line. E line being the electric line. We run the packer with the electric line till we reach the depths. Then from the surface, from the control cabin, we push the bottoms. These bottoms, it will explode uh, an atrazine charge. This charge, when it explodes, it will shear the pins. Same effect will happen. The slips will bite. The element will inflate to make a uh, seat. Packer set. In this case, we set it electrically. Now, once this packer sits, it became integral part of the casing. You cannot retrieve it. The only way to retrieve it is by milling. You have to go and mill it. Once this packer is set, then you run the completion. When you run the completion, the last piece of the completion, we call it tubing seal assembly, which is pipe with a lot of external seals. These external seals, this tubing seal assembly, it goes inside the packer. The moment this tubing seal assembly goes inside the packer, we say this is sting in. Sting in means the tubing seal assembly enters through the packer. Now, the completion is one piece, because one set. Now, this tubing seal assembly we run. When we run, should we run to the top of the strokes, means to the top of the packer, while we run to the middle of the packer, while we run all the way, which we call it bottom of the stroke. To answer this question, I have to have a little piece of information from you. This well is what? If this well is injector, then when I run the tubing seal assembly, I run it all the way to the bottom. Why? Because this is injector well. When you inject water, the tubing will be cooled. If it is cooled, it will shrink. So if it is shrink, it goes up, but it's still within the packer. But if this is a production well, I will put it at the middle of the stroke. So when you start producing, temperature will heat the tubing. So it will elongate a little bit, but still there is a space to go in. But if this well is high temperature well, I will put it at the top of the stroke. Why? Because this is high temperature well. So the elongation will be huge. So I have to give the full length of the packer for this extinction due to temperature. Uh, this is how it goes regarding the permanent path. If we are using production uh, retrievable packer, see this one, again, you can run it with production part of the tubing. You keep running till you reach the depth, then you put a plug in the tailpipe below it, Apply pressure from above, same, same concept. Apply pressure till you reach the pressure that shears the pins. Once pins are sheared, slips will bite, the element will inflate, packer set. Uh, or we can run it mechanically. Uh, some designs you can set it mechanically by rotation, but this is not a recommended method for so many reasons not to, to be discussed in this course. Yeah, but uh, the best way is we use hydraulic setting. This hydraulic setting. But this packer, once it is set, you can retrieve it any time by overpull. The manufacturer tells you to retrieve this packer, you have to put 60,000 overpull, 60,000 pound overpull. So when you put 60,000 pound overpull, you're going to shear another pins there, which is releasing pins. This releasing pins, it shears by overpull, not by pressure. So once you shear the releasing pins, you can uh, pull the packer uh, and you can set it again but you have to take it all the way up to make a complete redress and run it back uh, which packer we should use is it uh, permanent packer or retrievable packer it depends, a permanent packer we normally use it in high pressure high temperature well because it resists high pressure high temperature, while retrievable we use it in uh, completion we know that we will change frequently like uh, we're going to change from natural flow to uh, artificial lift method. 
or in completion where uh, the the well is high concentration H2S or CO2, so it will destroy the pipe frequently, or uh, an exploration well, for example, an exploration well where you don't know yet the situation, so a, a retrieval is, is uh, preferable because if you decided to abandon the well, you take your your parker with you, but if the sperm and parker, you lost your money then. Uh, when we talk about chemical assembly, here we have, this is the permanent packer, and this is the uh, tailpipe. Sometimes we put on top of the packer what we call BBR, Polish bore receptacle. Because actually, when you run a tubing seal assembly, inside the packer, you reduce its diameter. This might be a restriction for the flow, and it might not uh, to comply with the way you like. So, uh, in this case, we put on top of the permanent packer, we put what we call BBR, Polish bore receptacle. This is the BBR. So, when you run the tubing seal assembly, you don't go through the packer, but you through go the device above the packer, which is the BBR, so you, you don't restrict the diameter of the packer. And now let us run the tubing seal assembly. Now the tubing seal assembly, you see, we run it all the way down to the bottom of the stroke. So this well is producing or injecting. This well is injecting. We say in injecting, we put it to the bottom because when you inject water, it will shrink. It will go up, but still within, it, it doesn't pop out. But here, in the other example here, let us run the tubing assembly. We run it to the middle of the stroke. So this will definitely it is production. Two questions here I have for you guys. This is the setup you have. You start producing from this well. After some time, you discover communication. You discover that an annual pressure is keep rising up. There is a leak, and we discover the leak is here. The permanent packer seal is leaking. If the permanent packer seal is leaking, how to stop the communication between achieving the animals? What should we do? Again, the question, because I need you to answer it. This is a permanent packer, above it BBR, above it TVC Lastibia, and the completion. After sometimes a few months of production, you discover there is a communication between the tubing and the annulus. Your search results that the seal of the permanent packer is leaking. How to prevent this leak? Try and give me an answer. By applying pressure, applying pressure where? The analyst, you mean, or the applying pressure in the tube? This, this element, it sets by temperature. Halas, it said it leaks now. No pressure will help you. Drill out one of the answers. Drill out a leaking parker and replace with new one. Of course, you have to do that, but before you do this step, you have to kill the well. <laughs> you cannot do the, your, your, your statement, drill out leaking parker and replace with new, but yes, you are right. But before you do that, you have to kill the well. You have nothing to do but kill the well. Kill the well, and yes, the second state will be exactly what you are saying. Uh, retrieve the leaking parker by killing the well. Yes, killing the well is the only option you have. 
طيب let me change my question now with this setup you start producing from a well and after a few months you discover a communication between a tubing and the an annulus and you discover that the communication is due to this tubing seal assembly you see this packing in the tubing seal assembly is leaking so the production it goes through these seals to the annulus my question now how to prevent this leak if the leak is from the tubing seal assembly how to prevent this leak waiting for your answers Hmm. No answers yet. Yusuf, thanks for your answer, which is no idea, but at least you you want to let me know that you are there, which is which is really appreciated. Guys, if the leak is here, you know what you do? Just run a plug, wireline plug, put it in this landing nipple. By putting this plug in the landing nipple here, you prevent the flow that goes look guys i didn't ask you what is the solution i ask you what should you do to prevent the leak to prevent the leak or what you have put a plug here once you put a plug here you prevent the flow now you can pull the compilation change the tubing seal assembly put a new one just put a plug in the landing nipple that's it as simple as that, yes. Wireline entry guide. The wireline entry guide is the last piece in the completion. Uh, I don't like its name actually. Because it is not a wireline entry guide. They call it wireline entry guide because the slick line, I believe, was inven invented before in call tubing. And, uh, and the slick line was invented back in 1932. While in call tubing, the first prototype of call tubing we have was 30 years ago, 1962. So, uh, if the call tubing was invented before a wireline, the name of it now could be call tubing entry guide. I need to tell you that it is an entry guide to anything that you run through completion and you go out of the completion to the open hole. You need to go back. So, this helps you for easy go back to the completion. It is the bottom most tubing accessories and provide easy access to the bottom wall assembly into tubing. Because of this profile it has, we have two profiles. We have Melushu and we have build type. Each one has an advantage and disadvantage, of course. Yeah. In build type, for example, uh, it is better when we in horizontal sections yeah, or uh, high deviated wells. Because in high deviated wells or horizontal section, when you go out, you need to go back. Uh, tubing is on the low side. Uh, accessory, yeah, your pH is on the low side. So to go easy back, you need something with open mouth, big mouth. What gives you the big mouth is the middle shoe. But it has a disadvantage in vertical wells because of this shoulder you have here. This shoulder, it accommodates scales and levers on top of it. 
in uh, middle shoe is the same it has an advantage of course because the it's the diameter is less so it, you can pass through liners for example so anyhow each one has an advantage and disadvantage uh, this is the middle shoe so here this green color device is a middle shoe but i make it upside down i need you to see what's inside so if you look this is the upside down now to run in the hole you run it this direction if you need to go back to the production what you do this is the first part you're gonna meet with the wireline and the guide you see this edge so we chamfer it 45 degree so tools especially with a square shoulder can slide over slip over and goes but when it goes it will find another shoulder here which is at the end of the thread because the tubing the wireline inter guide we thread it to the completion so we have this square shoulder of the thread so we call it internal bevel so we also chamfer it 45 degree so as you see to slide in again uh, I will leave the last 10 minutes or so for your questions. I am done partially of the completion. Yani completion is a subject that it needs three months. I tried in two sessions and two hours to give you a summary of what it is. Yani. But uh, let me go through your questions uh, to see if you have any. Engineer Ahmad, do you see the Q&A section? I will go to the Q&A. I was looking at the chat, actually. Uh, oh, I have 16 questions in QA. Okay. Uh, when running wireline safety valve into the landing nipple, how do we know the dogs are exactly at the depth of the profile of the valve to be operated? Look, <laughs> once the dogs once the dogs in front of the profile the dogs has springs this springs will push the dogs to sit in the profile if the dogs are in the, into the profile you will not be able to move the valve up and down so if you can move the the, the valve up and down that means the dogs are not into the profile uh, Let me go to the field. differential pressure between two. Um, in situation where the pressure below the downhose valve is unknown or uncertain, what is the safety way to equalize pressure before opening the valve? This is one of the questions that I keep fighting with the people. Uh, the word unknown and uncertain, this is not an oil field. In oil field, you cannot work with in, in gray area. Uh, oil field, it is either black or white no gray if you work on gray area definitely you will sink so don't tell me i don't know you should know yani everything in oil field has to be known you know the reservoir pressure you know the hydrostatic head you know what's below you know the content of the hydrocarbon what's the per the, the water cut percentage and so everything is known but yes you can tell me you are uh, you don't know exactly is it 3000 or 3200 which which this this portion is accepted that's why you have to increase the pressure uh, that cover this uncertain area that you have uh, what's a dummy valve a dummy valve is a plug it is a plug the plug that stop the flow from tubing annulus or annulus tubing. It's a plug. You put a plug in the system. This is what dummy valve. If I have to choose between side pocket mandrel and SSD, which one shall I use? Both has different function. An SSD is mainly to give you circulation. But an SPM, it's mainly for gas lift. So if you if your will is natural flow, definitely you will use SSD, which is always one SSD, most of the cases, yeah. But the SPM, you use it in gas lift, uh, and it could be two, three, five, ten. It depends on the design. Uh, 
So definitely, if you need just for circulation, it is SSD. How do we equalize the pressure between the tubing and annulus before opening the sliding side door? Yes. You have to calculate the hydrostatic head. Yani let us assume that your SSD at a depth of 8,000 feet. So you have to get to the annulus. Calculate the hydrostatic head at the annulus at 8,000 feet, which is TVD times, which is 8,000, times the density of the fluid times constant, o, o, O52. Then calculate the hydrostatic head at the tubing, which is the same formula. TVD times the density times the constant. TVD, which is 8,000, times the density of the fluid you have in the tubing, times constant, which is 0 0.052. And if the tubing is shut in, you have to add the shut-in pressure. And then see what's the difference between them. To open the valve, you should have no difference. So you either increase the pressure one in one side or decrease the pressure from the other side. So both are the same. This is how to calculate the hydrostatic head in both sides. Yeah. I have a doubt. Apart from the course, I am from India and will join oil and gas industry this year. But I am always concerned about the uncertainty uh, in layoffs in the industry. How do one make sure that he doesn't get led off? Pray a lot. <laughs> well, I am not God. I am just an instructor. You, this, you are talking about unknowns. No one can give you all what you have to do. Your rule is to work hard. Leave everything else. Work hard. If you work hard and you are perfect in your job, the operators will run after you. The operator, I mean the, the money, the money holders, the money, will run after you. This is my belief. When trying to equalize the pressure below and above, let us say, for example, for a parker, how do you know what is the pressure above and below it? <laughs> how, do you, how do you know the pressure above it? You are the one who put this pressure, so you should know. It. How do you know the pressure below it? It is the, the reservoir pressure. Uh, but anyhow, the, the parker does not prevent the flow. Yani your question is not clear because the parker does not. Uh, when I said you apply pressure, I said put a plug first. This is to set the parker. You have to put a plug in the landing nipple below the parker. So what prevent the flow is the plug. Now then, because this is a positive plug. The positive plug, it holds the pressure from both directions. So when you put the positive plug, it holds the pressure from below. Then you apply pressure from above. It will hold it. Till you increase the pressure till it reaches the desired pressure to shear the pins. How can we make sure the sliding side door is fully open? Uh, you keep jarring, like jarring down, for example. The moment it passes through, your tools pass through, that means it is fully open. In which case should we have a landing nipple above and below a parka? No, in all cases. <laughs> In, in all cases, you should have a parker, uh, you should have a landing nipple below the parker. Otherwise, you will not be able to set the parker. Actually, you will, but you have to run what we call bridge plug. Band. But normally, you have to have a landing nipple below the parker to set the parker. And normally, you have landing nipple above the parker because while running the completion, you need to do injectivity test to this uh, production tubing that you keep... Uh, the threads right you keep tight it with a with a torque so you have every few stands you have to stop put a plug on the landing nipple above the parker to test this stands you run that there is no leak uh, you need to replace the permanent parker you can try more. This is answer to my questions. What is the difference between a tubing nipple and a wireline entry guide? A tubing nipple or a landing nipple, the main function of the landing nipple is to receive a flow control devices. The flow control devices is mainly the plugs and the valves. This is the main purpose of the 
landing level. But the main purpose of the wireline entry guide and the landing level, you can have it two, five, six, seven. But the wireline entry guide, you have only one wireline entry guide in the whole completion. And the purpose of it is to easy access the tools that you run to the open hole, you need to get it back. So to both has two different scenarios or two different jobs, I would say. Uh, is there no situation? Is there no situation where a particular SSD is placed in a different opening direction to avoid unintentional opening? Uh, <laughs> I said uh, you some design are jar up to open, some design are jar open, jar down to open. Each one has advantage and disadvantage. Yani, the jar up design, for example, the advantage of it that if you are running in the hole in deviated wells with stimulation tools and you couldn't pass the deviation section, so you put some weight and you pass. This movement, excess movement you did, if it is jarred down to open, you might open the valve, the SSD, and you destroy your job. The advantage of the jar up that this movement you make, it does not uh, affected. So each one has advantage and disadvantage and based on your design you select which one you use. Uh, I think this is the, no, still two questions to go. Is there, there is no situation where a particular is placed in? Ah, this is ah. Is there no situation where a particular SSD is placed in a different opening direction to avoid unintentional opening? This is we just open, and it is the repeated question, Yani. According to your technical knowledge, what are the most suitable SSD for using in any production well, jar up or jar down? No one can if any anyone answer you this question, he is dummy. I cannot answer you this question because it depends on the situation. Like you are telling me in your experience, Ahmed, you have been 35 years in the oil field industry and you discussed the four methods of killing the well. But from your experience, if I need to kill the well, which method I should use? I cannot answer you this question because the bullhead is the best in some situation. The reverse is the best in some other situation. Lubricate and the bleed is the best in some other lubrication. So, it depends on the, you are the best to decide which method you use based on the situation you are in. No one can answer you this question. What is the key difference between sleeve and the landing nipple? Again, in landing nipples, it is to receive and flow control devices like uh, uh, plugs and the valves. But the SSD is something else, is to uh, give you a sort of communication between the tubing and the animals. Two different issues. Dr. Ahmed, no more question. I have answered all the questions you have. Engineer Ahmed, uh, thank you very much. We will see you again uh, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah, we will talk about the wireline tomorrow. So okay. the session tomorrow will be about wireline. Okay, thank you very much and uh, enjoy your evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your patience during this one hour. See you tomorrow if you are interested to hear about the wireline.